one could call the star Betelgeuse a staple of the night sky. Situated in the constellation of Orion, it is usually one of the most distinctive stars visible to us because of its prominent orange color and brightness. I stress, usually. Betelgeuse is also a variable star, meaning that it changes brightness relatively often. But recently, it started dipping in brightness so markedly that it's now in unprecedented territory for this particular star, and can actually visually be seen to be dimmer with the naked eye, if you're familiar with looking at Betelgeuse. Betelgeuse is a very different kind of star than our sun. It's an unstable red supergiant so large that if we placed it in our own solar system, its surface, so to speak, its outer layers are pretty tenuous, would be located possibly as far out as the orbit of Jupiter. But that surface, if that's what you want to call it, would be a roiling mass of hot gas that doesn't even hold a round shape as a normal star would. Rather, it's asymmetric, and it's also tossing off asymmetric shells of gas. Betelgeuse is also young, estimated to only be about 8 to 10 million years old, and it's relatively close, at about 700 light years. Stars this massive live short lives and evolve very quickly. When Betelgeuse first formed, it would have been an O-type star. This is a blue-white, very hot giant star that exhausts its hydrogen fuel very rapidly, causing it to eventually swell into the red giant phase, and fuse helium, and so on of the periodic table. Humans have noted Betelgeuse in the sky since before recorded history, but they might have known it in a little bit different of a form. During the 2nd century AD, the astronomer Ptolemy referred to its color as ruddy, but three centuries before that, observation by Chinese astronomers revealed that they believed its color was actually yellow. Visually speaking, it could go either way, I'd call it orange. So one might say red or yellow. But there's another possibility, that the Chinese saw Betelgeuse while it was still in a yellow supergiant phase of its evolution, and over just a few hundred years evolved to Ptolemy's ruddy color. Whether it changed right before our eyes in antiquity is debated. But the point is, Betelgeuse changes a lot on several different levels, and given that the star is thought to be nearing the end of its life, it's believed that it will go supernova sometime within the next 100,000 years. Betelgeuse is already fusing heavier elements in its core, but it's unclear where in the process it is, and fusing through some of the elements can take only a very short time without changing the appearance and temperature of the star. That leads to uncertainty, and the remote possibility that it may be preparing to go supernova now. While not dangerous to our planet, when it does explode, it will be spectacular. The first thing that we will see visually when it does explode is a bright blue light outshining all other stars in the night sky, and possibly even the moon, to the point that you might even be able to read by the light of the supernova at night. But we will also have at least a few hours of warning. Betelgeuse and other supernovas are thought to produce a very characteristic burst of neutrinos that would appear to be coming from one direction, that of the exploding star. This early warning will allow astronomers to point their instruments at the supernova before it even officially starts. The supernova will also likely be visible in daylight as the months draw on. Supernovas do not happen instantly, but rather last for months or longer. Interestingly, just such a supernova was also recorded in the year 1054 by Chinese astronomers, and it was visible to them for nearly two years using the naked eye. They described the star, and others observed like it at various times in history, as a guest star. Betelgeuse's explosion, however, would likely only be visible from Earth with the naked eye for only two to three months. But Chinese astronomers weren't the only people on Earth that seemed to have noticed the supernova of 1054. References to what are thought to be this supernova, officially known as SN 1054, are found in documents from Japan and the Middle East. There are even Native American pictographs that may depict the event. After the fading of the 1054 supernova, and indeed another one that was observed in 1604, Nothing is seen regarding these events until the age of the telescope. The 1054 supernova remnant is now known as the Crab Nebula, and is one of the more prominent nebulae visible to amateur telescopes. If Betelgeuse were to explode, it would begin to form such a nebula, and probably a neutron star remaining, rather than a black hole. Now to the current dimming. Fast forward to the end of last year and today. Betelgeuse has gone into an unprecedented freefall in brightness over the last few months. While variability with this star has always been noted, it is a variable star with a semi-regular pattern, it's never gone this deep within recorded observational history. Why the star is dimming so dramatically is still unknown, but one remote possibility exists that it may be preparing to go supernova. 
Astronomers generally do not think this is the case, though there are some outliers that think this could actually be it. Only time will tell, obviously. More probably, though, the brightening is just an extreme episode of variability, or a coincidence of two cycles of variability causing the star to expand and cool more than it normally would. Or, Betelgeuse is known to throw off shells of material that might block some of the light, and it could brighten at any time. The star is also known for forming very bright spots on its surface as material convects throughout the star. Another recent false alarm, or at least very likely to be one, is the detection of gravitational waves coming from the general direction of Betelgeuse that some suggested might indicate that the supernova is beginning to occur. This is highly unlikely, and the areas where the gravitational waves were detected aren't exactly on top of the star, suggesting that they are unrelated to it. What did produce them, however, is unknown. And it may be that Betelgeuse has been misinterpreted entirely and may not be going supernova as soon as has been predicted. In a paper by J. Craig Wheeler and colleagues, they detail that Betelgeuse exhibits an odd feature that may indicate that the situation may not be as it seems. Betelgeuse rotates faster than it should, and this may indicate that the system was once a binary star system. And as Betelgeuse expanded, in this case the estimate is about 100,000 years ago, then it might have swallowed up its companion star. That interaction could have increased Betelgeuse's spin to what it is today, and also would have caused material to have left the merger and formed a shell. And a shell of material is observed near where it is estimated to be if the merger occurred. If this is the case, it may alter the equation of just when the star is expected to go supernova. There are actually several other noteworthy facts regarding Betelgeuse. While not settled, there is some evidence pointing to where the star formed in a star-forming region, and then it was gravitationally kicked out. This has led to Betelgeuse moving through the galaxy very rapidly. Another interesting feature is that Betelgeuse is so large and sufficiently close that astronomers have actually been able to image its disk. Visible also is the star's asymmetry in bright spots. That's unbelievably rare. Stars are generally so distant and small that they cannot ever be resolved as anything but a point light source. So will Betelgeuse explode? Yes, eventually. Is it going to explode right now? Not likely. But when it does, it's sure to be spectacular. I hope someone is still here to see it. The most recent news is that while the star continues to dim, the dimming is starting to slow down. And current predictions by astronomers observing it suggest that it may bottom out and begin to recover in brightness over the next few weeks. Incidentally, I interviewed one of the astronomers monitoring Betelgeuse's variability, Dr. Ed Guinan, on my other channel, Event Horizon. So here's a clip of that interview, and for the full show, click the link in the description below or in the end screen. Let's imagine for a moment that it did go supernova. What would that look like from here? That would be fantastic. <laughs> First of all, what you would see is it would stop getting dimmer and suddenly uh, its brightness would go up. And in a couple of days, it would be brighter than Venus minus four magnitude. And then it eventually, when it peaks one or two weeks into the explosion, it would reach the brightness, we think about uh, on the magnitude scale, minus 10, which is close to the full moon. So it would, during that time, it would cast shadows. You could probably read if you had good eyes, you could read by it. It would be like as if you had a full moon out. And that whole area of Orion would be just dominated by this brilliant like beacon of blue light. And then it would start to fade months, months. It would start to fade back. And it would actually fade into oblivion. Like a year later, it would be really faint. And because what happens then, the dust shell blows off and uh, the gas shell blows off. And uh, the core of the star, where the action is now, where the, um, the nuclear burning take place, it's called iron, it's a core collapse. It forms iron, iron is unstable, collapses. And then the most likely scenario, I heard people mention the black hole, the most likely scenario for this star's mass is a neutron star, or the, old, the other alternative is a black hole. It would just keep collapsing to a point. That's not, it's on the borderline of ending up as a black hole or a neutron star. Thanks for listening. I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently worried about the constellation of Orion. Won't look much like a hunter if Betelgeuse goes away. We'd have to reimagine it, but add our own modern world twist. Orion the lawnmower, or the air fryer, or toaster, or even Elvis the non-constellation that looks nothing like Elvis. On second thought, that's very worrying. And on that note, be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channels for regular, in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.